Hey everyone, it's Alexander, the real Mr. Robinson. This is my review for the Battle at Big Rock. So, this is an odd thing to come out because the Jurassic Park franchise has never done anything like this before. There have been several Lego shorts based on the newer movies, but you know, they're aimed for kids, they're goofy, they're not canon at all, so that's fine. No, what I'm talking about here is an actual live action short film that's actually canon in between Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom and Jurassic Park 6, whatever it's going to be called. And this short pretty much focuses on a family as they encounter an Acutoceratops and her young, and eventually they're they're ambushed by an Allosaurus, which I assume is the same Allosaurus that was in Fallen Kingdom, except older and a different design. So I caught this short on YouTube, I didn't catch it on FX, and I just wasn't into it. I didn't hate it, but at the same time, I'm just like, what was the point? I would have much rather have seen more time devoted into making the next movie rather than the short film to just hold us over, since the next one's not coming out until 2021. But that was pretty much a first impression of the short. Now that I've had a little bit of time to think about it, it's still weird, but I don't dislike it. It's an interesting concept within the Jurassic Park series, being able to show dinosaurs that are actually on the mainland and how humans are dealing with these scenarios. And I gotta say, for this being a nine minute short, it looks pretty good. The two dinosaurs featured in this short, Nasutoceratops and Allosaurus, are obviously done through CGI. They look pretty damn good considering that, again, this is a short film and it costs $10 million to make. And there's some really cool moments here and there. And again, the whole idea of dinosaurs being on the mainland and seeing how humans interact with them is pretty neat. However, I personally don't think the short did that good of a job of making it all that thrilling. There are some parts that are tense, and I'm not actually gonna criticize the characters this time around because it's nine minutes. You don't really have that amount of time to develop these brand new characters that we've never seen before because it's just a family. And if nothing else, I'm gonna use the same argument that I made for the characters in Dunkirk. While those characters might not be super interesting, but the whole point of this is to kind of put you in the perspective of these giant creatures being in our world when they've never coexisted with humans on the mainland. Granted, the characters do some very stupid stuff because this is a family, two parents, two kids, and a baby. When the Nasutoceratops and her young leave the area, the Allosaurus is still there, and then the baby, who has been quiet during this entire battle, cries, and then the Allosaurus looks directly into the camper and sees the family. The kids duck, but rather than the parents just ducking and taking the kid with them, they are in plain sight of the Allosaurus, trying to calm the kid down before the Allosaurus eventually rams into the camper and flips it over, just like in The Lost World where the two T-Rexes just flip the mobile lab. And considering that there are two young kids and a baby in there, they should have been dead. But I mean, whatever, this is the same series of movies where a group of people can fall out of an airplane from a tree and not break any bones. And this is also the same series where you've got a man who's being covered by volcanic ash and doesn't get burnt or killed. So, um... Yeah, physics in this series just don't make any sense at this point. And then with the credits, they show snippets of other instances where dinosaurs are on the mainland. Like you have a little girl being chased by a bunch of Compsognathus, which I know it's supposed to be scary, but honestly, that made me laugh. Because the Compies are pretty much chickens, and those videos on YouTube where people are running from chickens, I'm sorry, those videos crack me up. And then there's another scene where a car almost hits a stegosaurus and goes tumbling off a cliff, and the entire scene is shot through a dash cam. There's another scene where a bunch of fishermen are on a river and they encounter a Parasaurolophus drinking. There's another shot where a great white shark jumps out of the water to catch a seal, only for the Mosasaurus to jump out of the water and catch the shark, even though we only see its jaws. And then the very last shot is of a married couple that throw a bunch of pigeons in the air, and then a pteranodon swoops in and eats one of them. Again, it's an interesting concept. I can't say I'm excited for the next Jurassic movie, but at the very least, we know it's gonna be a completely different movie altogether. So I'm more curious than anything. I won't say I'm excited, but I'm definitely curious to see this next one. And this short, while it's not 100% good, it is definitely a nice appetizer, I gotta say. So, if I were to give this a rating, I would say...
because I like it better than Fallen Kingdom. I would say watch at your own risk. But I say that in probably the most enthusiastic way possible because it's only nine minutes long. You're not gonna be devoted to it 100% and it's a little interesting peek into what the next movie could possibly be. But it's just not all that great. But again, I'm gonna cut this short some slack because it's nine minutes. That's not enough time to develop characters or make this an epic. So for what it is, it's not that bad. And there you go, that's my review for Battle at Big Rock. And now I want to know what you guys think about the short. If you've seen it, what did you think? In terms of all of the Jurassic movies, even though this is a short, where does this fall in line for you? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and of course leave a comment. Don't forget to support my Patreon page, follow me on social media. And until next time, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.